All right guys, welcome to the channel. I'd like to introduce you to my newest project. It's a 2015 Polaris Scrambler 850 HO XB, and this is the base model. So as I said, this is 2015. There's only 266 hours on it. Really good condition mechanically. Cosmetically, needs a little bit of work, but uh, nothing major. Originally, I was looking at a Sportsman 570. My brother also has a Sportsman 570. I was looking at the Sportsman as well as the Can-Am. Uh, when this came up with the same dealer, I was looking at the Sportsman. My brother convinced me to buy this. He said it would be a lot more fun. I tend to agree so far. It's definitely a lot more fun than a Sportsman would be. So I bought this sight unseen. I saw a few pictures. I spoke at the dealer briefly on the phone twice. He said mechanically, 100%, they'd gone through this change all the wear items they could think of, took it for an extensive test drive, he said um, 80 to 100 kilometers, his son took it out for the afternoon, and they replaced some more items, cleaned it up, uh, looks really good. I was expecting a lot worse to be honest with you, cosmetically he said it was a six or seven, I mean besides the cracked fender, it's in really good condition for being five years old. One thing it did have on it before was big tires and wheels. Uh, those are off now, the dealer got rid of those. So this is a set of takeoffs from a Sportsman 850. Uh, I think they look great on the machine. I may paint them black in the future, but for now they're really nice and there's only about 100 kilometers on the tires. As I was saying, the only major defect with the quad that I can find is this nice crack that goes across the whole fender, down the side, and into the footwell. Now, I was originally just going to repair this crack, as it's not that hard, and then put a graphics kit on top of it, and you'd never know it was there. But while I was at the dealer, it said that they had a takeoff front fender from another bike, a thousand, that had a few hairline cracks that he'd give me. I'll show you that in a second. So after not mentioning this, after our two phone conversations, while I was there picking up the bike, the dealer pulls this out of the attic. It was perfect, save for being covered in dust and a few hairline cracks at the top corners that you won't see once I put the wrap on it. This machine is going to look very nice. One thing that I really liked about this bike was the factory Polaris 3500 pound winch and the winch control, which is one of the smallest winch switches I've ever seen on a bike. Another nice feature with this winch is the synthetic rope. Now, synthetic rope saves about 20 pounds on the front of an ATV, and I always try to reduce weight on everything I own as much as possible. This one is broken, however, and tied back on, so I'll probably have to replace it. I think I might replace the Fairlead as well with one of the smaller aluminum plate style ones, as I rarely use a winch. They are really nice to have, though. Like I was saying before, the dealer did a lot of work to this after they took it as a trade. That was one of the main reasons why I purchased this. Aside from the fender flares and the seat color, which will match the new color scheme perfectly, the dealer did a lot of work, like new rotors and pads, prof shop bearings, CV boots, ball joints, motor mounts, battery, major service, with all fluids, filters, bushings, pins, belt, etc. This bike mechanically is 100%. As you can see, it's a little bit dirty. It's because I had to try it when I got it home. So after a quick two hour drive, gave it a quick once over, went through all the fluids levels, the uh, air filter was brand new, oil looked great. I checked all the tire pressures. The dealer said they'd all be at seven. They're actually between eight and 15. So I adjusted those. Splashed the seafoam and I went out for a rip. So my initial impressions after a first ride, lots of power and very smooth. It accelerates very fast, although I wasn't expecting anything less. It's a bit more tippy than my last brute force. It feels lighter, although it weighs more. I think that might be, again, because it's a little bit taller, it's more sport oriented. Uh, I think wheel, sp wheel spacers will help in this regard. I think uh, I might enjoy a little bit more stability in the front end. I also think I need to lean a little bit more. The all wheel drive system, this is the first time I've tried a Polaris with the all wheel drive. It's automatic. Uh, it seems to be seamless as they claim. Switches from two to four wheel drive while all in all wheel drive mode very quickly. Uh, didn't notice any slipping at all while going through a couple small water holes and uh, muddy patches in the bare fields around my house. 
Clutching is apparently different depending on the model year from the factory on the uh, scramblers. So the engagement can be anywhere from about 1800 to 2200 in high range. Uh, this one seems to engage about 2100 RPM, which is a little high, but uh, with a little practice and finesse, I don't think it'll be an issue. Uh, if you're ham fisted, it's very abrupt. You really need to finesse the throttle for crawling. Uh, the dealer actually loaded this bike with a forklift for me because I have shorter ramps. He didn't want me to smash the window on my truck and I really had no time at all on this machine before I picked it up. One thing many people knock on the Outlanders, uh, and this, these tires and rims are from an Outlander, is the stock Carlisle tires. In the local hard pack clay and earth conditions, I had no issues with them whatsoever. I only have about 30 minutes on them, so that opinion may change, but in uh, slick clay and mud, obviously they're not as aggressive as a mud tire, but besides that, uh, on the vegetation, uh, beside the rail tracks that I rode through and in the hard pack dirt, I had no issues whatsoever. I think I'll use these ones for a few months, uh, considering it's usually dry here until the fall, and then I'll see if I can find some takeoffs or a good end of season deal if I want to switch them out. Uh, takeoffs seem to sell relatively easily around here as well, so as long as I keep these tires in good condition, I should have no problem unloading them. I did do one short hill climb on this. It was really just a large berm behind a neighborhood to block the sound from our rail tracks. Impression comparison to the brute force I had uh, was CSC tires. Those were CST tires. Uh, they were takeoffs from a Can-Am, so Can-Am Renegade. Sorry, they were a little bit less aggressive than these tires. I'd say they're more um, like a racing cross-country tire. But uh, this bike definitely had much less wheel spin, and there was less throttle required to get to the top. The brute force. Once I started getting to the top, there was a lot more wheel spin, and I had to really give it some gas to to get on top of the the berm. Now it was just a little berm, maybe 15 feet tall, but uh, still enough that I wouldn't want to turn around on it uh, with the grade that it's at. Overall, I'm very happy with the purchase, and I think it needs less than I expected. One known weakness of these machines is the weak suspension mounting points, as it's the same chassis shared with the Sportsman. The Sportsman is not necessarily meant to be jumped and raced the way the Scrambler is. Now, a typical failure includes elongation or cracking of the tabs. Uh, most of the time, the failure is in the rear, but they also make. Uh, they, there have also been some issues in the front. Now, Seco Racing was the first company to make a solution for this, and that's a plate that goes on either side of the bolt that you can see in the center of the screen. It sandwiches the suspension points, and uh, then the stress is transferred through the brackets instead of the frame. They make both a front and rear kit. Now I went with a Canadian version of this made by Custom Moto Quad that makes these plates out of stainless steel versus steel and powder coat uh, like the Seco version. I'll have an install video for these coming up soon. Now on to the build plans. So obviously I need to make some cosmetic improvements as there's cracked plastics at the front and like I mentioned earlier I'll probably put a wrap on it with some custom graphics. It's going to look really good. Besides that, I may powder coat some parts like the shifter, a couple other uh, aluminum parts as I have a little DIY powder coat system. It works really well. And then obviously I need a plastic weld and epoxy the floorboards. I'll probably repair the old front as well. Maybe keep it as a backup or sell it. It's always good practice for plastic welding. Now the exhaust that comes on these is actually pretty good from the factory. Apparently with an intake and exhaust and a tune, you only pick up one or two horsepower. It's actually a stainless system full from the head back. It's just pretty dirty. So as you can see, I put some PB blaster on a couple of the bolts there. Uh, I plan on taking it off. I'm gonna clean it up and hit it with some high heat paint. No point in changing if there isn't any power increase, but I might change it to a louder exhaust in the future. It still has a spark arrestor in it and it's pretty loud right now, so I'm thinking once I take the spark arrestor out, it's gonna sound really good. As far as other mods, I'm gonna see if I can uh, put a set of aftermarket bars, grips on here. The foot pegs don't actually have metal inserts like many other quads for grip. I usually sharpen up the foot pegs on my dirt bike, so I'm gonna see if I can add some sort of a metal foot peg to the floorboard the way they are right, right now mentioned before the new winch rope and alum aluminum fair lead 
uh, like I said, I barely use the winch, uh, but it's easier to clean and save a few more pounds if I add the aluminum fairly to the front of it. I'm gonna add LED or HID bulbs. I tried standard LED bulbs. This is one of the models. I don't know if you've ever tried them before. If you don't have enough resistance, they don't light up properly. So if I go one halogen, one LED, it's full brightness with two LED bulbs, it's not bright enough. So you need to either have an HID with a ballast or you have to get resistors or special bulbs uh, or just the white color halogen bulbs instead of the this dark yellow ones. Apparently they're going to be allowing ATVs on the road around here legally fairly soon so I might have to fab up a plate mount for it. I do have a plate for it, it's not installed because I am not supposed to be driving it on the road right now. Wheel spacers again, I might paint the wheels black, we'll see for now. At least for the summer they'll be silver, maybe if I'm bored over the winter I'll paint them black. Uh, I think I'm going to enjoy riding this and some of my other toys for the summer. And then I uh, might look into an ECU tune. Like I said, they, you only get one or two horsepower with full bolt-on mods, but talking to someone who tunes them, they said the throttle response is much improved. Uh, the bike runs cleaner, cooler, uh, a little bit more efficient. He said it is a noticeable difference and it's only a couple hundred dollars. So I might consider that over the winter. Uh, now, before we go, uh, I know I think I said haven't done any mods yet. I did do one mod. I put some Amsoil Dominator Coolant Boost in it. Something I do with all of my toys. Again, it's very simple. You take out the prescribed amount of coolant, you add the Dominator back in. It's about 30 mil, it's actually 29 mil per liter of coolant. This only takes two liters of coolant. So I took out 60 mil coolant. I topped it off with Coolant Boost. This I have noticed does make a difference on my other uh, toys that do have temperature readouts. I'm not sure if this even does have a, a temperature coolant readout or just a light. I haven't really explored the dash too much, but I have seen a reduction of five to 10 degrees on bikes that run a little bit warmer, like a sport bike or a dirt bike. So it's something that I have done before uh, just with water and I do coolant and I put it in everything I have. I have it in my Mustang, my truck, my winter car, my motorcycle, dirt bikes, everything. Absolutely everything has coolant boost. Usually I do Amsoil because I'm an Amsoil sponsored amateur racer. If I don't have that, I'll put uh, water water or something that in, but I usually have the Amsoil stuff around. Anyways guys, that's it for the video. Thank you very much for tuning in. New Scrambler 850, pretty excited about it. It's gonna be a fun build, fun project, and uh, it's a ton of fun to drive so far. All right, later.